I get an appetite to make art. Like, I just, I feel something and I have to make it. Some people feel like they have to exercise, they have to run. I feel like I have to make art. I think there's some little thing that says, like, if you have a painting in a museum and you catch a viewer's eye for more than, like, five seconds, and they're contemplating whether they love it or hate it, you won either way. I was famous in my country, and I hope to become famous in this country. Everybody needs their tattoo. It's a new way of life. It's a way of conversation and a way of being and a way of people in general. I've been getting tattooed since I was 12 years old. I was 18 when I had my first tattoo, but I made sure it was symbolic to me, which was uh, just a little symbol of my zodiac sign on my wrist. But all of my tattoos, I made sure. Whatever I got, I was never going to have any regrets for it. The reason a tattoo is permanent is because the tattoo molecules are larger than your white blood cells in your immune system. So if you see, if you see like a 20 year old tattoo, it'll look blurry around the edges because your body's trying to get rid of it, but it's just too big. The laser doesn't burn it out of your skin. That would create a big scar. It just shatters the ink into tiny particles that are now small enough for your immune system to flush out of your body. You gotta invest into your life, you know, no matter what that is. Especially if, let's for instance, you're taking this to the grave. For the rest of your life, you're gonna have beautiful artwork on you, so I think it's worth investing, you know. If you consider your lifetime built up of hours, seconds, and days, I mean, you're, it's not that much to have something beautiful on your body for the rest of your life. I have one tattoo. They all touch, so therefore it's only one. Tattoos are being more and more accepted in, in, our, in our generation or in this generation and I'm pretty sure it's going to be more accepted in generations to come because the art is being seen as art but it's still a misunderstanding and people don't really understand and there's not enough information out there to explain how a tattoo is applied. I love that you get to make something specific for someone and uh, each person I try to make something specific for them and specifically for their story. Um, I, I think that's nice for the collector. They get to have something unique. Do a good tattoo and really take pride in time and time what you're doing. Don't just do it because it's on TV. I just want to make people smile. Literally, if I do a mural, hopefully the vibe is or the thing is if somebody walks by it they'll they'll just smile and be content with seeing something like that I think there's some little thing that says like if you have a painting in a museum and you catch a viewer's eye for more than like five seconds and they're contemplating whether they love it or hate it you won either way when I was a pissed off kid I was doing graffiti really crappy graffiti I wasn't really good at graffiti um, so basically, it, it, it was an outlet though. And it was the first time I experienced like spray paint and stuff like that. But I had always drawn, I had always scribbled and recreated album covers and like stuff like that. DC's not known for creative scene. We're not known for fashion, at least not until recently. I mean, it's been calming, but like we're not known as these giant like icon monoliths of art and fashion. So us to be growing into that phase is really, really amazing. It's a kind of a renaissance cool thing that's happening right now. So like everyone says, what's your, new, what's your favorite mural that you've done? Or what's your favorite painting? It's like, it's literally always the newest thing. The next thing I have coming up, that's my, that's my favorite thing in the entire world. Because I get, to, I get to be a little kid. I get to get excited and hyper and like, and, like, and then go paint and at the end of it, like, I'm already thinking about the next, the next one. There's no recipe for it. If there was, that would be amazing. But it's, it doesn't work like that. It's not like Kool-Aid and you just open it and you mix it up and then there you go, that you have art and people want to buy it. 
you have to you have to kill yourself for it. You have to like work as hard as you can night and day. And like literally that's what I've done. I come from nothing. I, I've I've done everything I can to make that dream happen. And if you don't do that, if you work at a job and you don't like what you do, you you're 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 not failing, but you should analyze that and figure out what you want to do. Yeah. I am putting a message out there. I'm not peace, love, and hippie, but I'm definitely just like two seconds to try to make people happy, two seconds to try to think about my community, try to build out and help make the community more beautiful. Hey, Bella. I'm Mike Van Hall. I'm an artist and graphic designer, and I focus most of my work on the world of food and beverages, beer in particular. The silver can, when you turn it at certain angles, it turns black. I, I have an order to how I start my day. I don't check email until I'm done going through my creative review, which I you know, will research uh, a furniture thing or um, you know, try and find a, a design article that um, teaches me something. Um, that way I'm not like immediately in a rush by, oh, there's a deadline and that email came in overnight. You know, I, I wait to get to that. For this character, I started out um, sketching just to get the rough, uh, the rough shape. It's, uh, my, I know a lot of other guys do this really well. They'll, they'll draw it in pencil, bring it into Illustrator, trace it out there, and then fix all the little bumps and things. I can, I can more effectively see it in my head when I'm doing it um, uh, just directly in Illustrator, which takes longer because I am then moving all these little tiny dots in the vector um, in order to make it do what I want and look perfect. I try and use music to get myself in the right mindset, for sure. So if it's a very intense name on a beer label, then I like heavy metal, I'll listen to heavy metal. And that'll help me get in the right mindset to, to design in the appropriate direction. If it's some bubblegum thing, then I'll listen to like 80s Japanese music I really like, so. Everybody engages with beer, and so it's a way to have a cultural conversation too. You know cultural confrontations and ideas, it's, an ex it's a place to explore art that is, uh, allows some visceral reaction. I think being creative, just look around and you can find a lot of things to make them to do. is Ronaldo Cruz, but they usually call me Roy. I was born in the Philippines. When I was in the Philippines, I used to make accounts made up of indigenous materials, waste materials like coconut shells, dry corns, dried flowers, whatever I see around. It took me a lot of time. Hundreds of beads, hundreds of um, flowers. These beads, I roll it one by one on my hand. I need to cut very thinly and glue all together one by one. In one square, I spent like one, one in 30 minutes every night. My sister told me, oh my God, do you think you're gonna finish that? My mom uh, taught me how to sew, so everything I do, uh, she's really my inspiration because I'm so close to my mom. I'm mom's boy. <laughs> I suppose not to join this contest because my mom is dying, so I start working my dress. And I stopped it because my mom is in the hospital. So my nephew told me, uncle, you have to do this. Your mom will be happy. And after a day, my mom's funeral, 
the nephew who told me to join, he died in a car accident. And the winner of the grand prize for 2018 is Ronaldo Cruz. When they called my name, I was sitting, and when they said Ronaldo, oh my God, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I know my name is like, did I correct? Did I hear correct? My name is, they're calling my name as grand prize. Oh my God. I want to give advice to those people um, experiencing um, the loss or depression. Just believe in yourself, do whatever you want to do, don't stop. In addition to uh, final work having to be aesthetically pleasing and good to look at, it has to be scientifically correct. So you have to show all the botanical details of the plant that you're um, capturing. My name is Emily Gassio and I'm an artist. I live in New York City and right now I'm a second year at the Yale University uh, sculpture program. So I'm getting my MFA and this is my first solo show in New York City. Um, making work, making art means is more meaningful to me now because I don't know, it just feels good to make something physical, um, something that I imagine and making it real. This one is called um, Looking Through the Leaves at Two People Making Out. I see them. Yes. This is a twin bed sheet. The fact that it's a bed sheet, I was thinking about, you know, what we do in bed, um, we lay down and we make romances. Uh, so it's about love and about desire. I've been painting since I was 13. Um, 13 was when I started taking oil painting classes and I just like always been a painter, but um, I also do sculptures and I think of these paintings on fabric and paintings on drywall as more as objects, like a, it's like a crossover between painting and sculpture. This is the first drawing I did of the two people making out. To me, she's been warm, extroverted, bubbly, happy. So I don't know what she was like before the accident. I was really shy and like I wasn't very talkative. I. I was really withdrawn and introverted, and now I feel like I'm a little bit more, um, I have more of an awareness, I guess, of myself. She can do a high five, London, touch, touch, good girl. Good girl, London. I really enjoy the educators and the tours here. Um, I feel like I'm learning a lot from every experience, engaging with my audiences also. Okay, so this is a Chinese artifact, a figure of a dog. The dog actually has a really menacing face. Like, I don't think we mentioned that before, but it looks like it's growling. It's snarling at someone. Yeah. And what I've always found, and on, I think all of the educators who do descriptive tours, um, for people who are blind or partially sighted say that they really find that the description, having to articulate what you're looking at, helps them see better, but also helps sighted visitors see better too because they're being guided by the words to look and therefore their looking is extended. This dog also has a collar with studs on it. Really? Yeah, which is how we know that it was owned by a very wealthy um, person. Yes. It's more than a job, you know, it's just like, you know, you get an appetite, you're hungry. I get an appetite to make art, 
like I just I feel something and I have to make it. Some people feel like they have to exercise, they have to run. I feel like I have to make art. Well, botanical art is sort of a hybrid between science and art, in addition to uh, final work having to be aesthetically pleasing and good to look at. It has to be scientifically correct, so you have to show all the botanical details of the plant that you're um, capturing. The kind of people that are drawn to botanical art, you might think that people have to be very patient, but um, there's kind of a challenge to it. Uh, there's so much learning that goes on and um, it's just an extremely enjoyable way to spend your time. Plants are ephemeral. Some things bloom just for an hour or two, and then the petals fall off. So you're in constant search of a specimen that tells you the story that's germane to that particular plant. What view, what drawing, really is most authentic to that plant and best tells the story. And it is probably about a third of the way done. I'm prob it's a, I think I have, this is my fourth layer of watercolor that I'm putting down. So I have quite a few more to do. I'm building its form right now, its three-dimensional aspect. And um, once you get that foundation down, then you you continue to correct the color and or make more statements about the color and begin to work on some of the details but I am still working on the form getting the very lows low tones down the darkest tones and then protecting the highlights from a lot of paint botanical accuracy is where we begin and because we're we're giving very important information about something that is alive and can be seen by others, and we don't want them to be confused about what they're viewing. But it's up to us to make it artistically interesting, not in a way that compromises the accuracy, but that tells the story of the plant. But accuracy is first and foremost the primary, because so many plants are closely related to each other, and you could give bad information if you didn't really adhere to the accuracy part of it. We've been looking at the refugee crisis as a topic, so I kind of wanted to combine making a big project and the refugee crisis into one. The project isn't really meant to influence somebody's point of view. It's really just meant to make somebody feel more inspired to explore more about the crisis like I did. The idea came at school. We'd been looking at the refugee crisis as a topic, so I kind of wanted to combine making a big project and the refugee crisis into one. It culminated in me reaching out to uh, get actual life jackets from Lesbos in Greece, where many migrants would arrive. Life jackets create an environmental problem on the shores and housing is a human right. So those two factors amalgamated into the main premise of the project. Initially everybody would draw on them or uh, make something out of them but then when I finally got them I also decided to make a shelter out of them, uh, something more powerful, because when I touched them, I realized that each one of these life jackets represented a human life, and it also had the smell of the sea, so it just made it much more impactful than I thought initially. I realized that there were many parallels between an actual igloo and uh, the igloo that I had made. Real igloos tend to be in the northern part of the world where there's colder climates, and they're made out of the only other possible surrounding, which is ice, and in this case, 
this igloo was made out of the only possible surrounding that, that the people would have. And then it's also the idea that it managed to take two very objective strands out of the very complex and controversial refugee crisis and make something objective and impactful out of it that people can't really disagree with to serve as an impetus rather than as something to sway somebody's point of view. The painting for me like music. I don't care about the color or the white canvas or board because I just tell myself, let me dance with color and canvas. I graduate from university in Baghdad for art and I have a lot of friends, my family there. And all time when I do painting, I remember my country. In my country, we don't have a lot of color there, just gray and brown. Then I left my country because the war, because of the war. When the war began in Iraq 2003, I moved to Syria. After that, I stayed in Syria, and then I came to America 2009 with my wife and two kids. My day job, I do uh, maintenance. I fix many things like electric or uh, something in apartment, like door or window. Uh, when I have time, like if uh, I uh, have any space or any time, free time, I do my painting because I love painting a lot. There's so much uh, talk in the news now about refugees and how many people we should let into the country and what are they contributing. And I think this exhibit shows that there's individuals behind the word refugees and they have all sorts of talents that maybe we're not hearing about from the news. This horse, like refugee, some they come from Europe, some from Africa, some come from Middle East, and they come here and they uh, work together, live together, and we need to send a message uh, for human beings. We different color, but and we need to help each other for this life. America give to refugee a lot of things. I was famous in my country and I hope to become famous in this country. I hope one gallery, he say, come, I will be sponsor with you or I can work together with you to do exhibit or to still work with this gallery because difficult of I find one gallery to work together. I want to do beautiful painting and I give to this country and to people to enjoy with my art.